Good morning. I am running over to the USERP lab next door. Why am I running? Well, because I enjoy it so much. Can't wait to get there. Love this job. And because I'm being chased. Mommy. Mom. 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 So what happened when I finally got to the lab? Well, we were able to obtain an example flow graph with some controversy between installations for DVB. Here is a DVB S2 transmitter flow graph in GNU radio. After some troubleshooting to get it to work with the X310, we saw an output waveform using the built-in instruments in GNU radio. Here's the list of blocks available in mainstream GNU radio for DVB. Isn't this great? Note that there is already DVB S2X, although it has not been completely tested due to the lack of receivers. Wouldn't it be great if we could help out here? Next, we transmitted a test signal. It looked a bit puny at first, but we found the settings for gain and improved performance a bit. In other advancements, the HackRF team submitted the first pull request in their documentation. Here's an FM receiver implementation based on Michael Osman's wonderful tutorials about using HackRF and GNU radio. The link is in the notes. If you are anywhere in the ballpark about being interested in SDRs, then watch these videos. If it seems remotely interesting, then consider joining up our team and participating. It's a lot of fun and we need you. Here's the instrumentation of the FM broadcast band experiment. The waterfall shows the stations clearly. Next up is something I wanted to point out to those of you interested in microwave experimentation. Here's the band plan for 10 gigahertz. Note that our downlink is in the Space Earth and Telecommand subband. Note that right next door is an analog and digital band where bandwidths greater than 1 megahertz are welcome. That would be us, wearing our terrestrial hats. We're looking at making the radio autonomously determine what it's listening to and act accordingly. This is a band plan that works to our advantage since we believe we can use the same IF of 700 megahertz for both modes. We use GitHub for all our documentation and software. If you need to learn about GitHub, there are many tutorials at GitHub. You can get off the ground and to the point where you are forking and pulling like a pro. Check it out. Next up, something totally different. We want the user interface for Phase 4 Ground to be really good. We are visual creatures. One of the projects for visualization of contact history is called Dynamic QSL. This project is focused on exploring, researching, developing, and publishing an open source application that takes your log of QSOs and produces a beautiful representation of your activity with other stations. If you have only contacted a station once, then the resulting QSL card for you and them is simple. If you have had a lot of contacts, then it's complex and rich. The inputs to the dynamic QSL are whatever you've chosen for your QSL card image, or perhaps your avatar on phase four ground. These images have been manipulated by how many contacts you've had with them. So far, it's clear that automatically generating fractal images is not gonna easily work. Choosing a good fractal image requires a human curator to make good art. Using tree diagrams means the card is predictable and boring. However, there is another way. There's a wonderful book about algorithmically produced art called Creating Symmetry, The Artful Mathematics of Wallpaper Patterns by Frank A. Harris, or Ferris, F-A-R-R-I-S. This seems to be a winner. Here's something I made in a few lines of code using SageMath online. Try out this open source alternative to MATLAB at HTTP www.sagemath.org. Link is in the notes. All the code for the dynamic QSL experiments is in the visualizations directory of the documents repository at Phase 4 Ground's GitHub site. I'm hoping to work with Zach, with Zach Lefke at Virginia Tech to find students with an artistic and programming background to join this project and create a wonderful aspect to our user interface on Phase 4. There's nothing stopping this from being an entirely standalone project that anyone with a QSO log can use. The goal is to feed in a log and have beautiful dynamic cards, possibly animated to show contacts over time, produced so that the operator can display or send them. So Zach, if you're listening, I will be writing you as soon as I can with a lot more details. If anyone out there is interested in this or knows somebody who's an artist who might want to learn a little bit of coding, then this is a good project for them. None of this is possible without your support. 
please join ARRL and AMSAT if you are not a member already. They make this project possible. If you want to help the project more directly, then join at the address given here or contact me directly. You don't have to be an expert, you just have to want to become one. I will meet you wherever you are and help you out as best I can. Until next week.